Now we're looking at a different type of data we represent in binary. We encode into binary, i.e. give it a binary value is text. So we so text is built up with characters, a character being an individual unit. So characters are encoded with the use of character sets. And these are basically groups of codes that assign a character a unique bit pattern. So we can replace the character with a unique bit pattern. So ASCII is an example of a character set. So for example, we associate the uppercase A with this binary number and this would be called a character code. So a character set is basically like a, a long table of a character code for every character in the set and depending on what character set it is, it, the length varies. It could be just for English, it could be for every every language in the world, a character for every language in the world. But ASCII specifically was developed in 1960 in an attempt to solve certain compatibility issues. At the time, everyone kind of had their own character set, there wasn't any standardization, and so that caused a lot of issues when data was shared because everyone was using different character codes. So ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange, a standard coming from their desire to create a compatible, just a, a uh, a common character set for everyone to use so it's standardized and the fact that it's American is quite important as well uh, by the way I'll try and learn this acronym if you can uh, American is important because initially the codes were only seven bits long but then it was extended to eight bits so initial ASCII or just ASCII is seven bits long each character code is seven bits long not four in this case and then extended ASCII has an 8-bit long character code for each character. And the issue is, with with 7 bits you only get 128 possible characters, 2 to the power 7 is 128, so when you have 128 unique characters you can represent, and even with extended it's not that much more, you only have 256 characters, and that's not really enough for all possible characters you might use. It's enough for just American language and various other symbols, but for other languages, like if you want to add Mandarin or of acrylic system, there's not enough space to store them. So this couldn't really be a worldwide system. So because ASCII was unable to represent all possible characters, a new character set called Unicode was developed and Unicode is much larger. So ASCII is worth saying is a subset of Unicode. So basically they share character codes up to 127. So the same, so all the character codes for ASCII are the same for Unicode. It's just Unicode goes way beyond 127 or, uh, yeah, it goes way beyond that. And Unicode is not as simple as ASCII, it used initially 16 bits for each character, but this has since been expanded and it, it's a lot more complicated, so the technology is developed, it's a lot, it has a much cleverer way of doing things which we can't really go into, and there are loads of different standards that get released periodically, so it's not as simple as just saying there are 7 bits in ASCII. So assuming it does use 16 bits, which it doesn't necessarily or it doesn't anymore, this gives us 65 over 65,000 combinations, which is a, a drastic increase in what ASCII could. So you can kind of think of the character sets as just big tables, big encoding tables, i.e. associating a code with a character. And it's important to realize that the character codes are grouped and the codes are sequential. And what this means is, so they're grouped in terms of like numbers and control symbols and uppercase letters and lowercase letters. And the sequential means that the characters are kind of logically, or the codes increase logically based on what the characters are. So if we write the codes in decimal of course in a computer there'd be the binary equivalent and they're also sometimes written in hexadecimal these are decimal you can see they increase by one each time as we go up our numbers and the same with lowercase letters and this means that if you're given say the lower the, the code for lowercase a in an exam potentially you could find the code for lowercase e just by knowing that they increase by one each time and it's very logical so the difference between a and e is four a b a b c d E, so the difference of 4. So the character code for E is just the character code for A plus 4 and because they're grouped for lowercase the characters are completely separate to the uppercase characters but of course the same applies. You couldn't find a connection between a, a lowercase A and an uppercase E, they're separate groups. So that means that 97 is A's character code plus 4 gives us E's which is 101 in binary of course. So as I say in binary if we had EA as a string it would be represented as for two character codes put together, if that made sense, I and mean, then their equivalents in binary like this. And if you see here, these are actually in groups of seven, and this, of course, is a completely separate number if this wasn't in seven. Say this was in 14, this would be a completely separate number, but because it's in seven, the computer knows after seven, this character code is finished, and the next character code is started. So that's how the computer knows which characters which it knows once a group of seven is finished. So basically a typical exam question would be, it gives you a character code and it will ask you to find out what a character code down the line would be based on these two properties. 